a truly remarkable event is about to unfold. Deep within, a new life is poised to begin. Millions of tiny sperm embark on an epic quest. Their goal, a single waiting egg cell. This is a race against incredible odds. Only the strongest, the swiftest, will succeed. They swim through a challenging, vast terrain, a microscopic world teeming with obstacles. The journey is perilous. Many will not make it. The egg, a much larger patient sphere, awaits. It is nestled high in the fallopian tube. This tube is like a gentle guiding river. Sperm approach, a determined tiny armada. One sperm, just one, will achieve contact. It meets the egg's outer layer, the corona radiata. Then it encounters the tougher zona pellucida. This clear protective shell guards the precious egg. The sperm head releases special enzymes. These enzymes help it burrow through. At last, a single sperm fuses with the egg's membrane. A magical moment, a spark ignites. The egg instantly responds to this touch. This is the cortical reaction, a vital change. Tiny granules beneath the egg's surface release their contents. They alter the zona pellucida, making it impenetrable. No other sperm can now enter. This ensures only one set of paternal chromosomes joins. The gate is closed. The destiny of this new life is sealed. The successful sperm has delivered its genetic treasure. Its nucleus, carrying half the genetic code, moves inward. The egg, too, has prepared its own genetic contribution. These two sets of instructions for life draw closer. They will soon merge, creating a complete blueprint. This newly fertilized egg is now called a zygote. It is the very first cell of a new individual. A unique combination of genes, a tiny, single cell, holding all the potential for a human being. The journey of the zygote has just begun. It is still high in the fallopian tube. This tube is not just a passive pathway. Its muscular walls gently contract. Tiny hair-like cilia line its surface. They sweep the zygote slowly towards the uterus. This voyage takes several days. A slow, careful passage. During this travel, something amazing happens. The zygote begins to divide. This first division is called cleavage. One cell becomes two, then two become four, four become eight, and so on. The cells, called blastomeris, become smaller with each split. The overall size of the embryo does not yet increase. It remains contained within the zona pellucida. This protective shell is still very important. It keeps the dividing cells packed together. It also prevents premature attachment. The embryo is a compact ball of life. After about three to four days, a milestone is reached. The embryo is now a solid ball of around 16 to 32 cells. This stage is called the morula. It resembles a tiny mulberry, hence its name. Each cell within the morula is still totipotent meaning each has the potential to form a complete organism, but soon they will start to specialize. The journey continues ever onward. The morula tumbles gently along the tube. Its destination is drawing nearer. The fallopian tube provides a nurturing environment. It secretes fluids that nourish the developing embryo. This ensures the tiny cluster of cells has energy, energy for its rapid divisions and growth. The zona pellucida acts like a smooth, protective bubble it allows the morula to travel without sticking. Sticking to the walls of the fallopian tube would be dangerous. This journey is perfectly timed. Nature's design is intricate and incredibly precise. As the morula enters the cavity of the uterus, a transformation begins. Fluid starts to seep into the morula. It collects between the cells, forming a cavity. This fluid-filled space is called the blastocoel. The solid ball of cells rearranges itself. It is no longer a morula, it has become a blastocyst, a hollow sphere, a new structure. This typically occurs around day five, a crucial stage in early development. The blastocyst shows the first signs of cell differentiation. Two distinct cell types emerge. There is an inner cluster of cells. This is the inner cell mass, or embryoblast. These cells will eventually form the embryo itself, all the tissues and organs of the future baby. Then, there is an outer layer of cells. This layer is called the trophoblast. It forms the wall of the blastocyst. These cells have a different vital role. The trophoblast is essential for the next big step. It will help the embryo to implant into the uterine wall. It will also contribute to forming the placenta. 
The placenta is the lifeline for the growing baby. It provides nutrients and oxygen from the mother and removes waste products. So these outer cells are critically important. They are the pioneers preparing the way. The blastocyst is now a marvel of organization, ready for its next great adventure. But before implantation, one more hurdle. The blastocyst is still encased in the zona pellucida. This shell, once protective, must now be shed. The blastocyst needs to break free. This process is called hatching. The expanding blastocyst puts pressure on the zona pellucida. Enzymes secreted by the trophoblast also help. They weaken a small area of the shell. The blastocyst squeezes out like a chick from an egg. It is now free and ready to interact. The hatched blastocyst floats freely in the uterus for a short time, perhaps one or two days. The uterine lining the endometrium has been preparing. It has become thick, rich and welcoming, full of blood vessels and nutrients. It is ready to receive the tiny traveler. The blastocyst must find a suitable spot, a safe haven to attach and grow. This is a critical moment, the beginning of a deep connection. Implantation usually begins around day six or seven after fertilization. The blastocyst orients itself. Its inner cell mass side often faces the endometrium. The trophoblast cells on the outside make first contact. This initial contact is called apposition. The blastocyst loosely attaches to the uterine wall. Then a firmer attachment occurs. This is adhesion. Special molecules on both surfaces help them stick, like a tiny seed finding fertile ground. The journey's end is in sight. Now, the trophoblast cells become truly active. They begin to divide rapidly and invade the endometrium. They burrow into the soft, receptive tissue. These cells are remarkably invasive, yet controlled. They secrete enzymes that break down the endometrial cells. This allows the blastocyst to embed itself deeply. It is like a root system taking hold. This invasion phase is crucial for establishing pregnancy. The blastocyst sinks into the uterine lining. It is becoming truly part of the mother. Successful implantation is a profound event. It marks the true establishment of pregnancy. The blastocyst is now securely anchored. It can begin to draw nourishment from the mother. The trophoblast will continue to develop, forming the early placenta and membranes. A communication link is established. Hormones are released, signaling the mother's body. A new life has found its first home. The incredible journey from a single cell continues.